hey, hey guys uh, welcome back uh, in this video um, i will talk about uh, the channel estimation uh, in 4g or 5g like uh, how do we how can we perform uh, the channel estimation okay i will try to give a different perspective uh, basically i will try to cover the channel estimation across frequency domain or across uh, sub carriers okay so till now uh, we have seen that uh, uh, why do we need channel estimation and uh, you know to perform channel estimation what are the things that, that are required and how can we perform the better channel estimation and uh, we also uh, saw a uh, few estimators uh, and uh, some intuitive solutions uh, to do to do the channel estimation right so now we will try to finalize one of the solutions required for uh, channel estimation so first solution is uh, let's say least two squares uh, which we had uh, discussed and uh, the second solution is uh, with respect to uh, you know lmfc right okay of course there is an uh, intuitive way um, uh, intuition solution that also i will write down so the thing is that to perform least square estimation in the previous video we have seen that uh, it requires more signal processing time right and uh, the thing is better better accuracy that is there okay uh, but this is mainly used when there is a uh, low SLR, right when uh, noise uh, is dominating but to tackle that one uh, you know the 3gpp has provided various options like to transmit uh, the pilots with uh, more power and uh, you know we can transmit the um, pilots uh, uh, across uh, uh, various symbols right so considering those proposals what we can see is that and also considering uh, you know the more signal processing time uh, we can say that the least square estimation would be sufficient okay so for now let us say that uh, least square solution is the one that is chosen uh, for our further explanation um, so the thing is that least square solution uh, is will will take uh, less uh, signal processing time okay then with respect to accuracy you know if there is very good snr then actually the accuracy is very good but uh, if the snr is low uh, then accuracy is not good uh, in in such case uh, you know in such case what uh, what we will do is that when there is a low snr uh, you know let's say you know if you are operating if you are operating as 64 form we can reduce the modulation scheme to 16 form or qps case so that uh, you know we can reduce the bitter rate Correct. We can provide more robustness to the effects of the noise because see when SNR is low, which means accuracy is low, means basically we will see uh, more bitter rate, right? Bitter rate will be high. So to reduce the bitter rate, we can reduce the modulation scheme. So considering such a kind of strategy, you know, we will fix least square as the better solution. Okay. Uh, if uh, you, you can think uh, uh, the kind of solution which you want for your system uh, if you have really have uh, so much processing time so much resource to execute the LMMSC you can even go for LMMSC and that will work for any kind of uh, uh, SNRs okay there also if it if it goes too much low SNR you will see more better rate and again you will have to uh, you know follow this kind of strategy there but the thing is uh, you know if we are applying this kind of strategy let's say for example you know let's say for example 10 10 db snr maybe with uh, lmmsc you might have to apply this kind of strategy at you know minus 20 db snr and things like that okay i hope the concept is clear and now i hope that you also got the clarity why we are going with the least square and what are the strategies that we going to apply so considering that now we are talking about the channel estimation across the frequency domain right so what i will do is i will write this ofdm grid so in the uh, in one of the playlist i have spoken about ofdm grid okay so you can go through that one 
um, I will give, I will just try to give the, uh, you know, glimpse of this YFDM grid that is, you know, in the Y axis, we, we consider our sub carriers and uh, in the X axis, we consider um, symbols, right? The symbols are actually YFDM symbols. Now, um, as per, you know, 3GPP, uh, let's say this, I will usually consider it as one slot. Uh, then, you know, we will have 14 symbols, right? So I have written uh, those 14 symbols over here, like one, two, three. And let's say this is 11, then there's 14 symbol, 14 symbol. And uh, you know, across uh, y-axis we'll have sub carrier, right? So I just say sub carrier one, sub carrier two, sub carrier three, like that. Okay. So now, at each and every sub carrier, <coughs> we can perform. Okay. What can I write? Uh, just you know, I will say y1 is equal to h1 x1 plus n1 across each sub carrier. So um, as per the least square solution, now what is that I need to apply here? So y1 I should multiply with x1 star. Okay, then I will get h1 then plus n1 x1 star, right? Now I got the channel estimation here, but the thing is that uh, there is a noise. Okay, there is some some error over here. So in the intuitive solution, because intuitive solution is same as the least squares, right? Uh, uh, in the previous to previous video, we have seen that and we have proved that. Uh, uh, considering you know the DMRS is designed in a certain way, so to reduce uh, this uh, error or this noise, uh, you know we have seen that uh, um, we can do averaging. But for that uh, we need to consider uh, uh, you know we, we need to consider uh, certain uh, assumption that is uh, you know across the sub carrier. Let me take a different color. So let's say across a sub carrier, um, across a sub carrier, the channel is constant. So let's say, for example, you know, um, you know, some I would say, you know, 50 sub carriers. It is, the channel is constant. Okay. So then, um, you know, you have y1, y2, up to y50, right? So in each of that you will have equations and you for each of these sub carriers you apply the um, what do you say you know you apply um, that least square estimator and you perform the averaging across these 50 sub carriers okay then you will see that um, this particular error component would reduce because this is a noise component right and uh, with averaging noise variance will reduce. So by that way, uh, you will reduce this error and you will get the better estimate of uh, H1, okay? But the thing is that the question is, uh, can we consider that, uh, you know, the channel will be constant across multiple sub carriers in all the scenarios? So the thing is that uh, it is not so, okay? So then under which scenario the channel is uh, not constant across frequency, that is, uh, you know high speed scenario so in the high speed scenario what happens so your doppler effects will come into picture okay there will be frequency spread all right uh, or doppler spread so basically what happens here is like when you have sub carriers uh, uh, something like this uh, then we are supposed to get uh, this exact uh, the center portion of the uh, each sub carrier but because of the doppler spread we will not get the exact center, but we might get a slightly, uh, you know, uh, the data at the slightly different frequency. Because of which, um, since there is a, you know, uh, shift in the uh, required frequency across each sub carrier, uh, you know, the channel estimation across each sub carrier would be different. Okay, so here it is different so across each sub carrier i would say it is different that is when we cannot say that uh, we can take the channel to be constant across 50 sub carriers or even you know even one or two sub carriers also so in in which case we have to end up uh, uh, in calculating the channel estimation across each sub carrier right um, so y1 x1 star is equal to h1 plus uh, uh, n1 x1 star 
so even uh, it is same for uh, y2 x2 star also right so there will be h2 so you can see the channel is different and of course uh, you will have this error component can you see this error component so, uh, so when in un under high speed scenario you will see that your channel estimations are not good because you have a significant i mean you have you have some error with respect to noise and this error is not reduced because of averaging right so what does this mean which means that let's say i will take same snr okay under under this condition uh, if you have um, you know uh, without um, high speed okay we can say high speed train as per tgp spec you can say with high speed train so your channel estimation h at okay uh, is very good but whereas h at will be not so good right and uh, which means that your bit bitter rate is uh, very less whereas bitter rate will be higher got it but note that uh, you know with high speed scenario when you see this bitter rate uh, you know going up if you try to transmit with a better snr uh, you know then then uh, can we perform can we perform better channel estimation yeah because better snr means uh, you know we can uh, you know think of um, that the noise is low okay first of all we can say that there is no noise at all so this error component might uh, error component will go down and you can see a better improvement in the better rate. better improvement means uh, you know the better rate would be less okay under I, I, isnr scenario all right but still you know the channel would be uh, different across different sub carriers that is because of uh, your doppler doppler spread okay i hope uh, this concept is uh, clear um so now we got to know that uh, under under doppler scenario we cannot assume that the channel estimations are um, you know we cannot assume that the channel channel estimates are equal across the sub carrier now the next concept is that um, we need to go to the exact 3gpp definition okay how we are going to allocate uh, uh, you know the um, sub carriers let's say i have taken the third like this right third symbol mm, third symbol so as per the gpp spec you know thus pilots are allocated in the alternate sub carriers you know not exactly on every sub carrier so this is one scheme and this scheme is called as a configuration uh, type one okay i will now i am not right now going through the spec to show this one okay and also i am not going through the equations and all you can say that configuration type one uh, you know the pilots are arranged like this so which means that we will have one equation uh, uh, for this okay then directly we will have equation for y3 is equal to uh, h3 um, you know x3 plus so by calculating the least squares across each sub carrier, we will get h1 and h3. Then what about h2? Why do we need h2? Because using this channel estimation, let's say I will take the fourth symbol. Okay, in fourth symbol, we, we are going to transmit data, right? Okay, this data we need to decode. Okay, to decode this data, we need channel estimation. For that, I will write something like this. Okay, xd is your data. So if we know this H, then we can decode this XD. So this, th this should happen across each sub carrier, right, again. So be, here you will have, uh, you know, H1, XD1, then uh, here you will have H2, XD2, like that. So we ne you need H1 here, so H1 you want it. Then what about H2? H2 anyway, we are not estimated right now we need to estimate considering this okay so multiple options we can consider so the first option is you know whatever is estimated in the first h1 we can say that the same thing is available here so you know h2 is equal to h1 so you can consider like that okay even though if there is a doppler you can consider because anyway 
you know we are not having anything over here right otherwise if you still want i mean uh, i mean otherwise if you if you want to see the better channel estimation even at h2 what you can do is you have third one and you have uh, first one you can take the average of these two okay so your h2 will be h1 plus h3 by 2 okay so the third option is yeah you have to go for you know basically a different uh, um, kind of uh, um, interpolation technique or you can apply some interpolation filter you can see which interpolation filter would work better for you by doing some kind of simulations in the MATLAB and then you can use such a kind of interpolation filter to get the channel estimation across uh, H2 all right even this averaging is also one kind of interpolation okay um, maybe a special case of the interpolation filter uh, but definitely you can use a different kind of interpolation filter and I will not go through that one okay so I hope you got the clarity in the across the frequency domain how we can do the uh, channel estimation okay consider the given the 3gpp aspects but till now what we have seen is to perform the channel estimation across the symbol where we have pilot right so and from that pilot we know that uh, we will be using across other uh, other symbols to decode the data we will use those channel estimation across other symbols like as, as i mentioned here fourth symbol to decode the data okay but uh, is this the right strategy or can we have some better strategy for that we need to see you know how to perform the channel estimation and how to perform uh, how to consider the channel estimation uh, channel estimates across the time okay across you know first symbol how should i consider channel estimate second symbol a third symbol anyway we estimated that only we gonna use at the fourth symbol fifth symbol sixth symbol and even at the 14th symbol what are the strategies that we can apply to consider the channel estimates across each 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 of these symbols okay that we will uh, perform in the next video thank you very much have a great day bye bye if you're looking for more videos like this please do subscribe to this channel